Hi, welcome to this part of my review featuring Fight to Survive. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review featuring this tabletop RPG, where you use your martial arts to survive the mean streets of New Hope City and build a legacy, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about moves versus moves. If reputation has failed, if talk has failed, all that remains is violence. Combat of any kind in Fight to Survive is governed by five principles of attack and defense called moves. For each round of a fight, you pick a couple of these moves to issue against your opponent. The moves you picked and the moves your opponent picked are compared one at a time, and the versus chart determines the winner of each exchange. Combat is divided into rounds. Each round is a set of moves exchanged between fighters. Rounds follow a standard set of events in order. 1. The first swing. 2. Posturing. 3. Opening move. 4. Exchange of blows. 5. Consequences. When the round is over, the process can be repeated up to best of 2 out of 3 rounds. Or until one fighter or group of fighters has been knocked out, killed or both sides agree to stop. Combat in Fight to Survive lasts to best of two out of three rounds, no matter how serious the intent of the fighters. It could be a friendly competition or something begun with killer intent. It is still best two out of three rounds, as always. These rounds do not have to be necessarily distinguishable to the fighters. There is rarely a referee. Rounds primarily serve as a way for the players of Fight to Survive to distinguish the action. Between rounds, fighters might only pause for a moment before re-engaging. In extreme cases, some fights can escalate to best of 3 out of 5 rounds. But this is rare, and even more dangerous. Let's talk about the first swing. Sometimes before the fight even begins, a fighter can sneak in one extra move, forcing their opponent to respond. The first swing is where the aggressor gets an extra move. Any surprise attack qualifies as a first swing, including misdirection. The first swing is not an opening move, because it happens before the fight can truly begin. The first swing is not possible when both fighters are aware and have agreed that they are going to fight. If their intentions towards combat are known to each other, or if they have both otherwise demonstrated a commitment to violence. If the criteria for a first swing is not met, then proceed to posturing. Situations where the first swing is permissible include when one fighter wants to fight and the other one does not, when one fighter is completely unaware of the other, when violence is uncertain, when appearances are deceiving. Now how to throw the first swing? The fighter issuing the first swing is identified as the attacker or the aggressor or aggressors. Now here I will make a correction for the sake of immersion and keeping the roleplay going. It says here, the aggressor tells the game master the move they wish to use. It's much better to say, the aggressor describes the move that they wish to use. There is no conversation between the game master and the players, they do not exist in the fiction. Only the player characters exist, and the non-player characters and the game world. Depending on the circumstance, the opponent may or may not be aware of what the first swing move will be, like in the event of an ambush, for instance. Both the aggressor and the responder write down their moves for the exchange of blows. Using their moves, the responder must deal with the first swing before the normal sequence of moves. Now, when it comes to posturing, this is when opposing fighters know there is a battle upon them. The game master will ask the player of each fighter involved to pick their moves for the round, usually three of each. The game master doesn't need to ask anything once again. You already know that this step of the fight is happening. Just let it go with the flow. Just describe your moves, your posturing. So when it comes to striking a pose, the time you spend coming up with the moves for the round is equivalent to the fighter's time spent stretching posturing and preparing for the coming exchange. Moves are options. The moves you pick are not your fighter's combat sequence for the round. 
The moves can be issued during the exchange of blows, in any order in response to your opponent's moves. Concerning number of moves, there are circumstances where you may have more or fewer than three moves available to you in a round, such as with the first swing or other troubles, or if you are outnumbered. The Game Master will inform you of these circumstances before posturing begins. Most of the time, however, you are getting three moves for the round. This should be handled through description most of the time. Moves are secret. It's important that players do not know the choice of moves made by their opponents beforehand. Now, when it comes to versus non-martial artists, a martial artist has an advantage against any opponent untrained in the martial arts. Any non-player character with no martial arts knowledge and no aptitude for it, this precludes those practicing street fighting, is considered to have only a single move for a round. Concerning the opening move, the first move issued is an exchange of blows. This is called the opening move. Since one move answers another, it's important to figure out what move is starting off the back and forth exchange. The side that makes the opening move is the aggressor and the other side is the responder. The aggressor acts first and is obligated to issue the opening move or abandon the conflict. The role of aggressor can change each round. A fighter becomes the aggressor when they are the last to make a hit or the other fighter has little or no will to fight. Now when it comes to turn order by build, in cases where the aggressor is not clear, the opening move is determined by build. Let's talk about the exchange of blows. Each move is compared with their opponent's move, and the versus chart relates the outcome. On the chart, the left side represents the aggressor, the one taking the action, and the right hand side represents the responder, reacting to it. Blank spaces represent a tie where technique must be compared to decide a winner of the exchange. When it comes to call and response, after the opening move, the responder issues the next move based on the move they have incoming. Then the aggressor issues another move, and the responder responds to it again, and so on. Remember to maintain the back and forth to know who should be issuing a move when. The only disruption to this back and forth are the defensive moves of block and footwork, which stand. Normally, one move cannot work against multiple moves. So if the situation dictates that an offensive move would carry over, instead damage is issued, for instance with a bad move. The exception to this is defensive moves, both block and footwork, which stand. This is a term of the game, and apply through several opposing moves in sequence, so long as they remain relevant. Now when it comes to technique, with the exchange of any two moves that do not trump each other automatically, the technique of each move is compared to the side victory, with the higher technique value winning. If the moves are compared and their technique is tied, or there is no technique for either move, then a bigger build wins by force of weight. If both fighters have the same build, then defensive moves win out over offensive moves. If both fighters issue an offensive move, both hit at the same time. There are circumstances where technique is not important in a fight at all. Specifically, when there are too many combatants in some kind of mass brawl for the grace of technique to matter. An outnumbered circumstance, in other words. Your game master will inform you of these situations when they come up. But I would emphasize do it through roleplay, through description. Don't just tell your player, hey, you cannot do this, or hey, you can do this other thing. Just describe it, make it part of the fiction. Now concerning consequences, when a move is issued, it has the intent of causing an effect, usually to do damage. The three possible effects of a move, be it in armed or unarmed combat, are as follows. Make a hit. The move does damage. Grapple, punch and kick do this. There is also render a move moot. The opponent's incoming move is stopped or avoided. The damage of the move is negated and you are unharmed. Block and footwork do this. There is also that was a bad move. You provide your opponent with an opening and are hit instead. Any move can be a bad choice if you issue it when it will lose. Sometimes you have no choice but to do this. 
if you are otherwise out of moves. And this concludes this part of the review. In the next part we will take a closer look at consequences. I really like the flow of combat in this RPG. And the knowledge of brawling and martial arts of the author is quite evident. However, you must describe things, you must keep on role playing, don't have a conversation between the game master and the player, don't tell the player, oh now this happens and the player, can my character do this move? No. Handle it via the fiction. As the opponent closes in, you find yourself cornered against the wall. It is impossible for you to employ kicks at this distance. And technique is sure to be nullified in the next exchange. So you see, through description you are already giving the player a lot of information concerning the player character's situation. Just don't tell the player, uh, um, so you cannot use kicks here because uh, the opponent is too close and uh, uh, in the next exchange technique is not going to count, okay? <laughs> you see, that's very lame. So keep on role playing, keep the immersion going. Thank you for watching this part of the review and thank you for your likes and your comments. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. And remember, it is better to roleplay and fail in character than not to roleplay and fail as a player. Once again, thank you, and see you later.